voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser, somebody said the accuser, of our brothers and sisters who accused them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb, and there go that what? By the word of their testimony. They did not love their life so much as to shrink from death. The accuser, who was hurled down from out of heaven? The devil. The devil knew from a long way back how to accuse. Back in the garden with Adam and Eve, you know, he couldn't kill them, <laughs> but he could get them in trouble. And the minute they disobeyed God, guess what the accuser of the brethren did? He ran up to heaven and he told God, now, now you're going to have to kill him. Didn't he? He couldn't do it. And, 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 you know, the thing about it is this, that it, it, it was true that he couldn't, but he knew the law. You know that Mr. Hamilton knew the law. But the thing about it, the accuser made demands on the law with Adam and Eve because God had told Adam and Eve that if they eat from the tree of life, they must what? Die. <laughs> Aren't you glad for the blood of Jesus? I thank God for the blood because, see, when Jesus went to the cross, he took away the sting of death. And you know what? God, death was there. We think the enemy created death. He didn't create death. But I tell you, because that scripture was there to Adam and Eve. But, but what Jesus did, the, the stinger, because see, when, when, when God used this, he said that Jesus took away the sting of death. Well, the sting of death, you know, that make you feel like death is kind of like a bee. <laughs> Amen? And if Adam put the sting in, Jesus took the sting out. It could no longer harm us anymore. Amen. You know, when you got stung in the bee in the co by a bee in the country, the first thing they would do is get that stinger out because it would keep on hurting. Yeah. Aren't you glad that the sting of death can no longer harm you? Yeah. God is a good God. Yeah. But, 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 you know, in, in, in going and redeeming us, the blood is speaking of that today. The, the, he said, they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Don't, don't, don't be on the side of the accuser of the brethren today. Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes we can find, read things to accuse, uh, uh, get accusations, and we can do that to one another. Husbands and wives can do that. Did you do that? <laughs> I ain't going to say, did you do that this week? <laughs> Did you hide my shoes? Did you, where did you, did you throw that paper away? You know, after a while, all them pieces of paper start looking alike. So you better move them. Amen? Amen? So we have the accuser. But that's why you feel guilty when he comes after you, even in the middle of the night. Nobody may not even know this in your life, but the enemy is still trying to accuse you. Thank God for the blood today, and, and the blood still speaks. But redemption goes a long way. What is redemption? Redemption is when you recover ownership of by paying a specific sum. We all talked about them redemption steps. Excuse me, stamps and how you saving up S and H green stamps, and now they do other things. They got coupons. I don't know, you may have coupons, and you take about 20 of those things. Take up some time over there at the Walmart. I got my coupons. Why? I'm going to redeem them. <laughs> I'm going to recover my money. <laughs> Amen. And, but God redeemed us not by silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus. I've been bought back with a price. I'm priceless. Why? Because what God paid for me. He, he must have thought that I'm worth more than rubies and silver. Why? He sent the best thing he had. And the best thing he had in heaven was Jesus. Somebody said redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. In Galatians 3.13 it said Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse 
for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who is hung on a pole. In some translations, they hung on a tree. Because back in that day, it was a curse for someone to be crucified, to, be, to die on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessings given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. How many know we have, we have a promise today? He's redeemed us from the curse of the law. And the blessings of Abraham, what's the blessings of Abraham? That goes back that said your seed would be multiplied and, and how you would be blessed and, and you would be more than the, than the sands. And you know there's a lot of sand down there at Gulf Shores and a lot of sand there on the beach. He said your number will be greater, Abraham. He was talking to a man that hadn't even had a child. How I many of you know God looked past Abraham and he saw you and me today? Yeah. I want the blessings of Abraham. Yeah. He has redeemed you from the curse of the law. He has redeemed you to blessings. Now, you can't go all of your life believing God doesn't want to bless you. Sure, we might have messed some things up and couldn't see a lot of things the way we should. And, 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 and I know I might have missed some things along the way, but God still wants to bless me. I got to believe that. I, I had that's the sermon that I had was going to preach today, not today, another day that that uh the trouble don't last always. <laughs> Y'all got to wait on that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, we receive the blessings of God. We receive the enemy tries to attack you in one of these three areas. He wants to rob you by bringing poverty and sickness and death, and he wants to keep our inheritance from us, the ones we have both here and in heaven. Amen. Amen. I, I say here, yeah, we, we know that we want God to bless us down here, but God said we got an inheritance in heaven. 1 Peter 1 and 4, go ahead and turn there. 1 Peter 1 and 4, and it says, And we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. I like that one. I like that one. He said, I have an inheritance kept in heaven. That sounds a lot to me like a reservation. You know when you go to a a, a, whole, a, a a big, a nice, nice place where they got your name written down before you come to dinner and you have a reserved seat. We don't go to that place a lot often because they don't do that at McDonald's. <laughs> <coughs> Drive through the window. <laughs> they don't even ask you your name. But if you go to one of those places where they have those big meals, Fancy meals, they have a reservation and they have your name written down. And then they'll say, and then sometimes even to the even the better ones, they'll say, they'll say, Henry Party Four? <laughs> huh? But then some are even greater than that. But they have dinner reservations. And sometimes if you Mr. Smith or Mitch Jones or whatever, five people could jump up and, and they say, That's us. But not in the reservations of heaven. I don't care how many people. I don't care how many people got your name. I don't care how many times they call it. The thing about the blood of Jesus, it's reserved the place for me, and it's got a spiritual identity. Get up there, and they call John Brown, and everybody jump up. You go like, I wonder if that's me. Are you going to know it's you? He identifies you by the Spirit. Our names are written down in the book of life, and, and, and our spirits are, are, the, are, the, are the distinguishing factor. Are you working on your reservation now? If you're not working on your spiritual growth, you won't be distinguished. Matter of fact, you won't get there. But I want them to know when they say, Ella, I don't care, because there's a lot of people. It's the people. Know. You pull up your name on the Internet and see how many people come up. That ain't me. <laughs> but we know we need to keep our inheritance. 
And the devil don't want you to have it here, and he doesn't want you to have it now. But what on earth is worth you missing heaven for? Amen. Why? Because all this is legally ours. I say everything. The new birth and from the kingdom of darkness that I've been, I've been delivered from that into the kingdom of light. I know it's mine. You don't have to fight getting folks about your inheritance that's, that's, that God says you have. Amen. Amen. I say it's legally mine. Why? Because the blood speaks for me. The blood said, I died, that they may have life and have it more abundantly. In God, a good God. You, you, you know, you, you just don't want to, to, to get, to, to, to live this life. And, and I remember, I love that song, I'm living this life so I can live again. Colossians 1, 13 said, for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. I have a new citizenship. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm a new citizen. Because see, in Philippians 3.20, Philippians 3.20, he said, but our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. This outline went into a new citizenship with great authority. You not only are a citizen, where? Here, but in, in, in heaven also at, at the same time. Because, see, you can't live on, on my street and your street and say you had the same address. But spiritually, we have a new citizenship. Our citizenship is in heaven. And, and, and there's some things that you got to know. You, 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 you got to realize where you're at. And you're not in the devil's house anymore. And, 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 the cuss, and there's a thing that goes on that went on in the courtroom of heaven. It was a custody battle. Whose child are you today? I'm a child of the king. The devil is constantly trying to take you back and say he got ownership of you. Why? Because sometimes she acted like me. Uh, she did this or he did that. Uh-uh. It's a custody battle went on, and the blood speaks for me. He, he speaks for me and tells me, it's my witness today, that, that, that I am a child of the king. Yeah. Satan has no answer to the blood of Jesus. I say he has no answer to the blood of Jesus, but you do not give the devil a foothold. Anybody know what a foothold is? A foothold, <coughs> excuse me, is a place where a person's foot can be lodged to support them securely, especially while climbing. And what the devil wants to do is get his foot in your life so you can't move any farther. Or in fact, so you can fall. I believe the enemy designed the pandemic so people would fall. How I many know we got to move on? I'm so glad I had a foothold. You know, that climber, if he get a foothold, he can go all the way to the top. But you cannot allow the devil to get a foothold. We used to have that little saying that don't let the devil uh, ride, because if you let him ride, he going to always want to drive. Amen. Legally, Satan was defeated at Calvary. You know, it would be foolish uh, uh, of you to be rooting for a team. You watched the game. You saw the game. You saw the score. And they lost. And you run around talking about, we won. <laughs> huh? Well, you know, sometimes you feel like you want to do that, but you know it's not true. And the thing is, we can't not allow the devil to say he won when he didn't. Jesus won. You on the winning team today. Amen. And, and you have a legal authorization that gives a, and, and, and you got a power attorney. What does that mean? Once you come to the hospital time or you go into court or something, they'll say, who has a power of attorney? What's the power of attorney? It's a legal authorization that gives a designated person the power to act for another person. Well, Jesus gave us a power of attorney. Luke 10, 19. See, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. 
Then he said this, nothing will harm you. Oh, my, that's when we got the to plot today. Yeah, I'm going to do what I need to do to be safe. But in my spirit, in my, uh, in my inner man, I got to know nothing's going to harm me. Because, see, he's given me authority. I'm a part of a new kingdom. I I'm a new citizen today. Amen. Power of attorney. That means you got, he's given, he said, I've given you this. Was he just talking to the disciples? No, he was talking to you and I. So what do we have to do since we have this power of attorney? We need to plead the blood of Jesus with your mouth. <laughs> you can't just sit around just thinking it. You got to say it. Amen. Psalms 107, 2 said, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy. He said, if you've been redeemed, say so. Sometimes people don't want to say they redeemed because that identifies them as Christians. Then folks going to look at them, and they're going to expect them to do right. If I don't say nothing, they won't know nothing. <laughs> yeah, but if you redeemed of the Lord, you have to say so. Tell the enemy you've been born again. Tell your children you've been born again. You know, you got to tell them, honey, this is how, this is who we live for. Sometimes you may feel like you're in a camp all by yourself. I remember when I first got saved, no one else in my family was saved. I felt like I was just lonely. No one understood that. You this young and you're not going to go out and have fun. Girl, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but when you redeemed, you got to tell everybody. You got to lift up your standard. I don't care who comes or who goes. I've got to love God. I don't care because, see, the Making it to heaven is more important to me than anything else in this earth. Is it more important to you? You got to say so. We got to say so about the word of God. We got to say, now, honey, this is what the words say. This is not what mama come up with or daddy come up with, but this is what the Bible says. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yes, Jesus loves me. What? For the Bible tells me so. Amen. Yes, I'm redeemed because the blood of Jesus speaks for me. Yes. We have a witness, praise God. We have a witness, and that witness in 1 John 5, they say, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. I remember that place there in John where John's writing this with, and, the, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jesus as a dove. And, and, and Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus was baptized in the water. And, and, and then, 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 you know, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, didn't he? And then John said, I'm a witness. I'm going to write these things. I'm going to bear record of it. <laughs> How I many are glad that that, that that was the blood, the water, and the spirit bearing witness one another? And that's the same witness we have today. What about a witness? Quickly, a witness is expected to speak. You don't go in the courtroom talking about I ain't going to say nothing. Brought you in there to say something. Amen? And, and, and Hebrews 12, 24 said to, that Jesus was our a, a mediator of a new covenant, and, and, and that he spoke on better things sprinkled with the word. Amen? A witness. He was our, his testimony. And, and, and we have him, praise God. Colossians 1, 12 said, And giving joy for thanks to the Father who has, has qualified you to share in the inheritance. I thank God that we can ask for the witness today. Amen. I can ask for Jesus. Now, 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 I may not be able to speak for myself, but God's speaking for me. Jesus said, now, you know, you up in the courtroom of life and the enemies say you, you have to be sick. He said, Jesus, uh-uh, they don't have to be sick. Look at the back of my back. By his stripes, we were healed. How I many you know the blood speaks? Yeah. Satan tried to use his power over you. You can call the witness today. You can call the witness of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to call the witness and I'm going to give bold testimony to the, to the Lord. Because, see, the devil got to know you who you represent. I was reading that about uh, Joel, Joel Osteen, and, and one preacher said, Joel Osteen, that's, 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 that's uh, Brother Osteen, the younger one's father, and uh, Joel's father, and, and they said, 
They believed that Joel Osteen's had such a bold confession for the Lord that, 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 that when he woke up in the morning, the devil said, uh-oh, he's awake. How many of you want that kind of testimony? When, pa when pastor get up and he say, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I can do what he says I can do. I boldly confess. That's not just a confession for Sunday morning. I like it. When they, on, if they ask me something on my job, sometimes if they don't ask me, oh, no, God will help you. Amen. We just got to trust God. Yeah. Believe it. We got to believe what it says. We got to know that he is our father and that he speaks and that God will not break his word with me. How I many you know one thing the devil knew? He knew that the, when the Lord spoke that it was power yeah. and that it was true. And you're overcome by the blood of the Lamb. You're justified by the blood of the Lamb. You're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You're at peace by the blood of the Lamb. You have eternal salvation. You're God's property. You're washed. You have victory. There was one lady that told of, of a dream that a friend of her had. A, a friend was kind of like a hippie type, and she said she had this dream and that she had gone to heaven and she was third in line and two people were ahead of her and, and one was a guy that was a was a, a boy scout uh a leader and 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 he was getting in and they were the thing was can we get through the heavenly gates must have been the question and and the, and the guy said yeah I've, I've been doing i've been working with young men for over 30 years and helping to have integrity and and and, and, I, and, I, and i've and i've been good and then, then they said, I heard a voice, is that anything else? And, and then he said, well, well, no. And he said, well, uh, you denied. And then a lady came up, and she said, and she saw her come up and said, what have you done? Said, I've been a Sunday school teacher for 30 years, and, 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 and I, I just went to church. And, and he said, that's wonderful, but is there anything else? The lady said, I've just been good. And, and then the, the, the hippie lady, her friend, kind of walked up, and she, she, he asked her, what has she done? And she said, well, I don't have anything that I've done, but I plead the blood of Jesus <laughs> to come on in. How many you know it's not about how much good we've done? But because it's good in what God has done. And we got to establish in our heart today, do we have faith in the blood and that we have a right to use the power of the blood by faith. We need to plead the blood of Jesus over our family, over ourselves, over our church. When I pray and we do communion in the mornings, I, I, I pray this part of my prayer. I plead the blood of Jesus from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Yeah. Every cell, every system come in line with the word of God. Yeah. You Why? I don't want anything covered. I don't want anything uncovered, excuse me. Why? Because I don't remember all those nerves. And Lord knows those bones will get away from me. All that stuff God intricately made me with, the blood he put in me. But I can pray that prayer every cell, every system. Because, see, the cell is the building block, even of the blood. You got white cells and red cells and all that other stuff you don't want to hear this time of day on Sunday. But you can bleed the blood today. How many are glad of that? I thank God for you, but I thank God for the blood. Thank God for our, our TV audience today. I pray that we just do, and most of all, that we be who God say we can be. Pastor, you ready for communion today? Amen. Thank you for being such a wonderful audience today. Well, I hope you enjoyed, Sister Ella, and you need to have God in your life to walk in the blessings of God. I want to pray with you. If you never invited Jesus into your life, now's the time. Right now. Don't wait. Let's pray. Father God, right now, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that you died for me. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Lord Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for redeeming me. In Jesus' name, amen. You just prayed that prayer. You just started a brand new walk with God. 
our announcers got some information that we want to give you or send you and you can have this absolutely free. So when she comes on, just follow those directions and you'll be blessed. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us today for this life-changing word. If you pray the prayer of salvation, we have some materials to help you with your new walk with God. Three mini books by Dr. Kenneth E. Hagen, The New Birth, In Him, and Why Tongues. These books are a free gift that will give you a greater understanding of salvation, what you are entitled in God, and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. If you would like to become a partner with RTWBC, your prayers and financial support will help us work together and accomplish great things for God. On our website, rtwbc.com, you can submit prayer requests and also give to the ministry safely and securely by debit or credit card on our online giving page. Just go to Choose Funds and follow the directions. You can also give by Cash App at dollar sign RTWBC or by mail at Reaching the World Bible Church, PO Box 2487, Sylacauga, Alabama 35150. Stay connected with us by liking the Reaching the World Bible Church Facebook page and subscribing on the Reaching the World Bible Church YouTube channel. You can also contact us at www.rtwbc.com. Joining us at 109 North Cannon Avenue, Sylacauga, Alabama, or call us at 256-249-9790. Please join us again for our next service where we will continue to preach the uncompromising Word of God to help feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. God bless you, and we'll see you on the next time.